What did the Voyager probe see and do in interstellar space? In 1981, Voyager 1 escaped the ecliptic, which is the Earth's plane of orbit around the Sun, heading 35 degrees to the north. Voyager 2 later went under the ecliptic, heading 48 degrees to the south. However, this was barely the start of the Voyager's journeys. To reach interstellar space, the probes would have to traverse the termination shock, a region in which hypersonic solar winds run into fierce resistance from the interstellar wind. Beyond the termination shock, the Voyagers would encounter the heliosheath, where slowing solar winds pile up, becoming denser and hotter, followed by the heliopores, a final boundary between the heliosphere and interstellar space. But in spite of what you may think, the start of the interstellar medium doesn't actually mark the end of our solar system. Indeed, it will be another 300 years until Voyager 1 reaches the Oort Cloud, the vast region of billions of icy planetesimals that surround our solar system like a bubble, and another 30,000 years until it exits the cloud, leaving our solar system forever. When the Voyagers traveled through the heliosheath, they made an incredible discovery. Because the Sun's magnetic field spins in opposite directions on its north and south poles, the spin creates a ripple where they meet called the heliospheric current sheet, sort of like the rings created by dropping a stone in water. However, when the sheet reaches the termination shock, it compresses, as though the ripples were hitting the edge of a pool. The Voyager probes discovered that after the termination shock, these stacked up ripples form magnetic bubbles. This means the boundary of the heliosheath is not as smooth and clear cut as scientists thought. Instead, it is a fluctuating and magnetically bubbly environment, 